Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We're pleased to be joined in the interview room by the last entrance into the 2024 <laughs> Masters field, Akshay Patia. Akshay, welcome to Augusta National. A decade ago, you competed at Augusta National as a drive, chip, and putt finalist. And yesterday, you earned your way back with a dramatic win. Can you describe your last 24 hours? I really can't. Um, you know, just wire to wire is very hard to do. Uh, having a six shot lead with nine holes to go, you feel pretty good about yourself. I was playing really good all day, and Denny just kind of found this, you know, fire in him. And when a guy shoots 28 on the back, makes, you know, I think he had seven one putts on the back nine. It's pretty impressive. And uh, just to be standing here, it's, it's amazing. And um, you know, just having the opportunity, the members giving us the opportunity to play their golf course is, is certainly special, and uh, I can't wait to be you know, on that first tee on Thursday. Great. We'll open it up to questions. Jimmy. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Akshay, do you remember the last time you were here? Yeah, I came here with a member uh, in 2019 or 2020 in November. It was the first time, you know, I, I played the golf course, and just unreal moment uh, for me. Just being on the pre the presence of this place is is spectacular, and um, you know I'm I'm excited to be here as a participant this year. And um, yeah, it's great. Can I just follow with one thing real quickly? Um, were you one of those kids who, when you were in the drive, chip, and putt, you're standing over a shot, saying, "This is for the Masters." Uh, you know, in the drive chip and putt, not necessarily, but growing up as a kid, I think everyone kind of says that to themselves. And um, just to have that opportunity, you know, that first time uh, at the drive chip and putt is, is pretty surreal. As a kid, you just don't realize how lucky we are to have that opportunity. And for everyone to be so gracious to let some kids, you know, hit some golf balls on the range, hit some putts on, you know, on the 18th green, it was Unreal, and I remember making that putt, you know, wearing those baggy pants, and uh, thankfully my style's gotten a little better, so. <laughs> Great. Daniel. I uh, read that you're working with Julie Elon, is that correct? I'm working with uh, her other half, um, Brian, so I, they're affiliated. Yeah, so I'm just wondering what you guys have been working on and, and how were you able to tap into that yesterday and really, really the whole week, because as you mentioned, you know, sleeping with the lead three times in a row can't be easy. Yeah, uh, you know, we started working together um, start of Players Week, and, you know, there was so much that I had going on in my life, not just in golf, but more so in my life. And, you know, we tackled a lot of things, a lot of long conversations uh, throughout this these last couple of weeks. And, you know, I, I've, I've really tried to work on myself just off, off the golf course, you know, dealing with a lot of different things. And, um, yeah, we just had, you know, different goals every day. Um, and I remember texting him Tuesday, like, he said, how are you feeling? I said, I don't feel that great. You know, going to Valero, I was hitting it terrible. And, um, you know, I finished 11th the week before. But, you know, just learning a lot from, from the Houston Open. Um, there were six shots that I feel like if I would have backed off of, I probably would have had a better chance of winning the golf tournament. And, you know, we tackled that. And, uh, yeah, everything kind of came to fruition. And, it wasn't easy for sure. I felt like I couldn't breathe the whole day, the last couple of days, and but it was also a weird sense of calmness. So I don't really know how to describe that. Great, Krishna Swami. Akshay, you know, do you realize what kind of an impact you and Sahith are having back in India? There are no Indians. There are no Indians in this field this year, but there are two Indian Americans, yourself and Sahith. Do you realize the kind of impact you are back having back home? on Indian golf. In the last 24 hours, I've written three stories in two different airport lounges about you, trying to, you know, in fixing time in between the transfers. So do you realize what impact you're having back in your home of origin? I, I don't know if I quite realize, you know, what Salheth and I can do for the golf in India. Um, I know it's really special when I have, uh, you know, a bunch of fans looking up to me, a bunch of kids coming up to me and um, you know, I, I almost had the opportunity to go uh, a couple of years ago before COVID happened, which would have been really special. 2019. But 19. yeah, 2019. And I'm really hoping I can do that uh, soon. But I think it's awesome just being able to grow the game, just not in the States, but, you know, in India. I think, 
it's special to us. Uh, the words and, and kind of like what we can do for, for golf there is, I think, awesome. And, and the development we can, you know, we can accomplish for people over there is, is really cool. Ann. Congratulations again. Can you talk about your shoulder? How, how does it feel? And is this an injury that you've had or did it just happen? Yeah, uh, the shoulder is, you know, it's going to be a work in progress for sure. I've had it happen, you know, two, three times. Uh, I had a full dislocation playing pickleball a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, I had it, you know, kind of subluxed in Bermuda a couple, uh, 2021. Uh, and I played through that week. I think I finished 15th or 16th. So it's nothing new to me. It was a weird, weird experience because I had so much adrenaline. So I had no pain kind of in that playoff. But it's definitely, um, you know, something we're going to have to work towards. And, you know, I have a lot of trust in my team that we can, you know, tee it up on Thursday. Johnson. Akshay, you won the Barracuda Championship back in uh, August of last year. And it was a bit of a disappointment to you not to get the FedEx Cup points because you weren't technically a member. You were a special temporary member of the PGA Tour. In your work with Ryan Davis, was he able to help you get over the, the disappointment that I know you carried for a while? Um, you know, we didn't get into too much detail about that stuff. I still think winning out here is, is a big thing. And regardless of how that, that outcome happens, you know, I think it fueled the fire in me for sure. And, and having, you know, not being in the signature events this year, not having the opportunity, it was really hard because, you know, I'm, I'm working my butt off. This is my seventh week in a row. Uh, but now winning this event last week, uh, being in all the signatures and playing golf courses that I really truly love, is something that I'm really excited for. And, and uh, you know, just even being here first off is unreal. Sam. Actually, can you tell us, take us back a decade and tell us uh, some of the stories you remember from coming here the first time and, and the enduring memories? Yeah, uh, I remember we, we had, they were hosting us in a hotel, all the, all the participants and, um, you know, I was in the elevator, John Daly walks in, and I'm like, this guy's got a Diet Coke hood on, and, and I realized it was John Daly, so it was really cool to kind of see him in, in the flesh for once, and um, yeah, just driving up Magnolia Lane, you know, with all the kids, uh, met a lot of, you know, new friends. I remember we were in the hotel, and uh, we got one of the, the Masters Cups, you know, from the tournament, and this... We had a couple of us, but we all grabbed our putters and just were putting on the carpet in the hotel and just having a bunch, bunch of fun, really. Um, and then I remember coming out, you know, watching the practice rounds uh, on Tuesday or when, uh, yeah, Tuesday. And, um, you know, we were sitting on hole four on the grandstands and it was just so surreal. Um, I remember how bad I wanted to be out there and not just watch. And, uh, you know, now being here, and being the first, you know, drive, chip, and putt participant in the Masters is, is really cool. So I'm hoping, you know, this can inspire a lot of kids that are, you know, having the opportunity to play. Bob. You tell us just the logistics from last night to today. Did, did, did somebody have to get housing lined up? Did you come last night? Did you wait till this morning? When did you get here? All that. Yeah. Um, you know, my agent's done a great job. You know, he's he's had a lot of belief in me since I was a kid, uh, since I turned pro and, uh, you know, had the house lined up. Um, and then uh, one of my sponsors, One Flight, he uh, he flew his plane out for us, uh, waited for us, watch, you know, watch me finish the tournament off. And he got us got us here safe and sound. It was a pretty, pretty cool experience for me. Um, and, you know, we just got here. The car was ready. Uh, so we got here last night and just kind of got in pretty late and had a good good morning. What, when did you get out here this morning and, and what did you do today? Yeah, I, I slept in as much as I could. I didn't get much sleep. Um, you know, still a lot of adrenaline. And then I got here about 30, 40 minutes ago, so around 2 o'clock. Um, and just kind of got the lay of the land of Augusta. You know, I haven't been here in a couple of years and I truly haven't seen, you know, it as, as, a, as a tournament. So... It's, uh, it's pretty cool. There's a lot going on, for sure, and uh, you know, I'm still learning a bunch. Joy. Akshay, because of your Indian origin, I'm going to ask you this. Have you ever done Bhangra, 
the you know the exaggerated hand and shoulder movement dance i have not no uh, don't do it <laughs> <laughs> i might hurt my shoulder doing that <laughs> but i wanted to ask you uh, akshay we all know about i mean the indian parents and the parenting that we have gone through and you have also gone through the same thing what kind of values have you got from that that has helped you become probably a better golfer yeah i think you know my my parents are always very supportive and i feel like in our culture you know everyone's family so you know regardless of of how you're doing um everyone either comes up with you or you know if you're going down everyone still stays up so i i've learned a lot from my parents uh even my family you know all is supportive and um you know it it makes me it makes me feel like more of a person and not just a golfer so i i i truly take that to heart and um yeah it's kind of what i've learned for example jeffrey not, jeffrey if you had a moment to kind of uh stop for a minute and think of just what this moment will be like and and what your goals are this week not yet um you know there's there's still a lot to learn this week just registering um kind of like i said getting the lay of the land and um you know i'm going to talk to Ryan my psychologist this afternoon he's flying into tonight and uh you know we'll have a good good game plan some goals and um kind of get the ball rolling tomorrow when you did get on this golf course a couple of years ago you say with a member what was it like to be out there and what kind of uh feelings did that bring to you i mean it's all a special here um i think just the aura of the place has you know just it's 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 unreal um and i think too that you know we we were one of probably four or five groups out here so you kind of have the whole place to yourself and um just the golf course is unreal you you just know all the golf shots that have been hit on on certain holes and just kind of picturing that in your head is is pretty cool and in real life it's it's definitely life changing david or <laughs> what bob asked but what time did you get here last night we got here around 1:30 in the morning sean is um what you think your practice schedule today through wednesday will be and who you have um practice rounds lined up with and and do you think the shoulder will impact your preparations mm-hmm. at all today i'm just taking it easy uh, i'm going to get some physio work uh just make sure my body's good and rested like i said this is 7 weeks in a row for me so it's a lot of golf uh but i also have a ton of adrenaline so it kind of balances out uh as far as tomorrow not really sure what i'm going to do and then i know for sure wednesday i'll play the the par 3 contest and um but yeah just going to kind of sit down with the team and and figure out you know what the best game plan is and you know i'm hoping you know my shoulder should be good but i might be a little scared to hit some shots and we just got to find out tomorrow mary kate kind of going off of those what have you learned about the power of rest being on this crazy stretch of golf and maybe balancing your time both on and off the course yeah rest is very important um you know just not spending too much time on the golf course um you know it's a hard balance because you feel like you have to get so much done but at the same time you really don't i remember you know winning bear could i only played 9 holes and ended up winning the golf tournament and so there's always a fine balance but i feel like you know when i have pressing my fiance around we just kind of take take a seat back and and go do some normal things and not just focus on the golf so you know it's a little different for a major week and this is obviously a very important week to to many of us and um but you know I talked to to John Rom you know last night and he was just kind of saying that you treat it like a normal event and so that's what I'm going to do question actually the uh, ultimate acid test for your adoption of the uh, broomstick putter must be your, that last putt on the regulation yesterday can you talk a little bit about your adoption of that in that particular situation Yeah, um, you know, I I've built a really nice team around me, people that I trust and um, you know, we went through kind of the stats last year of what I can improve on. My ball striking was always really good. Um and, you know, putting always kind of lacked. And when you want to contend in tournaments, you got to, you know, make some putts when they count. And so I just felt like the the style I was using previous was you know, it was good, but it wasn't 
it just wasn't as consistent. And so we took a chance on, on switching the broomstick and I talked to a couple players about it and they gave me some good advice, just kind of what to work on. And, um, you know, I made a promise to myself that, you know, I'm going to take at least six months to try this putter out regardless of how it goes. And, you know, so far my stats have kind of skyrocketed. So it's, uh, it's a nice improvement, especially from kind of the 10 to 15 feet range. And, um, you know, I feel like regardless of what putter you have, uh, in that moment, I, I feel like I was going to make that putt, so it doesn't really affect me. I guess. Question. Uh, actually, how, how much is, of a challenge is it to kind of switch caddies and go through caddies kind of mid-season? And I guess the second part of that is what allowed you and Ryan to work so well in the first week together last week? Yeah, it's definitely different. You know, I had uh, you know, my caddy for seven, eight months. He was awesome. Uh, we had a great relationship. And, um, you know, I <laughs> just finding someone last minute, you don't know how you're going to mesh. They don't know your golf game. Um, and so, you know, I had David Cook, Webb Simpson's caddy in Houston, and he was awesome, super positive, and um, I had a lot of fun with him. And, and Ryan and I have had, you know, a pretty good relationship. He was caddying for Justin Self for, for a long time, and Justin and I came up at the same time. And so we spent a lot of time together, especially on the Corn Ferry Tour. And, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, you know, he's just – he's really smart, obviously. He coached at Stanford, and um, he, he works really hard. And he just – he has a good idea of, and sense of how I, how I was feeling, you know, throughout the day and also kind of the, the goals that I had in front of me. And so he just kept reminding me of that. And, um, yeah, just all worked out. It's pretty crazy. It's kind of a, a fairy tale story. Maybe just a few more questions. Uh, Dan? In addition to the drive, chip, and putt, when you were younger, you also played in the Sage Valley Junior Invitational and did really well there. How much of an impact do you think playing in those two events when you were younger had on you now and your ability to get back here, knowing how special an opportunity is to be able to play here in Augusta this time of the year? Yeah, I think you know, Junior Invitational is a very special tournament to us. We get the, you know, we get to stay on property. We get to hang out with. You know, with all the participants there, the golf course was spectacular, and I think it's one of the probably the high, highest ranked tournament that we ever play. It feels like our Masters uh, as kids, and you know that golf tournament was was great. Uh, I played the year I won. I played against Ludwig, who finished second, and you know we're both here today. So I think it just shows an an, an impact on you know how much that tournament generates great players and. Like I said, being here as a kid is kind of a fairy tale. Um, just having the opportunity, qualifying, and you earn your spot getting here, just how I did today. And so it's a uh, it's a cool kind of it's a cool thing that you know everyone at Augusta National does for for us and uh, for years to come. On on. Yeah, Shay, uh, if you can describe for us uh, the transformation of your game from your college days to a pro both in terms of skills and personality, and aligned with that, what kind of friendships you made on tour after turning pro and how they've helped you sort of be where you are today? Uh, so I didn't go to college. Um, but I guess, you know, growing up, I had some mentors out here pretty early on. Phil Mickelson was one of them. And, you know, he was a big brother to me. He... He would play, you know, as many practice rounds as we could when, when I got sponsor exemptions on the PGA Tour. And, um, you know, I'm still trying to find my, my footing with some friendships out here. It's definitely a little different because it's, it's a lot more business oriented, um, especially when you tee it up. But I have a couple good friends out here and, um, you know, I'm looking to kind of build my team and, and kind of stick to, to who I have and who I trust. Great. Last question, uh, Brian. Yeah, Akshay, how do you balance the obvious excitement and playing in your first Masters and the awe of being here with just getting down to business and being able to put on your best performance? Yeah, I think, you know, soaking in what just happened is, is important. You know, you don't get to kind of have those opportunities too much. I've waited seven, eight months to, to kind of get, you know, those feelings of singing in the car on the way to the airport and uh, just kind of bouncing up and down on the plane ride. But you know, today I'm still going to soak it in. Tomorrow is kind of, okay, what's our goals for the week? And, um, you know, just get ready to tee it up. So 
it's another golf tournament. It's a very special tournament, but at the end of the day, you know, one of us is, is going to win. So that's kind of my goal, and, um, yeah, I'm excited to tee it up. Well, Akshay, thank you for your time today. Welcome to Augusta National and the Masters. Thank you.